Hello everybody. So, the last lecture we have started discussing about combination. We discussed about that what is the importance of this in mineral processing and we have started discussing about what are the important properties of minerals that dictate the methods of the combination devices or the combination techniques. So, another property or another characteristic of material is the material structure. Like it is the internal structure that is what we discussed in the very first class that although the graphite and diamond the chemical composition is identical, but the prophysical properties are different because it is the crystal structure which dictates that physical properties. So, similarly some substances are homogeneous in character that means, if I have a large piece of rock if it is homogeneous. So, whatever the property I will get here I will may get the property similar property here. So, in that case probably it is much easier to break it because I know exactly what is how much of force it is required. As we have already discussed that mineral substances specifically when they are in relatively much coarser sizes, they have got lines of weakness like a faults along which the material split to form flake like particles. So, for large particles when it is coming from a mine site, they may have internal cracks or flaws or faults like that. And if we correctly decide that which direction my forces should be applied to have the optimum breakage at the minimum input energy. And by doing so, we can optimize the energy utilization for the desired amount of or say desired level of particle fragmentation. Abrasiveness, abrasiveness is a property of hard materials particularly those of mineral origin. If the material is abrasive, so it may limit the type of machinery that can be used because is the wear of the material surface through which I am trying to break that material. So, the maintenance related issues, the capital investment of that equipment on that equipment. So, we must be very careful about the material properties if it is abrasive I have to take precautions to the uh, while selecting the equipment that whether it can it can accept or it can reduce the sizes even though it is abrasive. Like during the grinding of some very abrasive substances the final powder even this is another problem it may be contaminated with more than 0.1 percent of metal owned from the grinding mill. Grinding means when you go for very finer sizes suppose for one mineral we arrived at a conclusion that the liberation size should be 40 micrometers. My mining engineers they have seen the samples starting from 1 meter to maybe 10 micron 10 micrometers, but I want everything to be broken down to 40 micrometers. So, we have to use some kind of your a technique we call it grinding. So, we will discuss it in due course of time, but what will happen during that course if the material is too abrasive then my metal surfaces will start getting worn out and that may contaminate my material also. So, it is not only the maintenance issue of my equipment it is also the contamination related issues of my material which will create problem in the downstream processes to my to our friends to met, uh, in metallurgical industries. 
the moisture content. It is found that materials do not flow well if they contain between about 5 and 50 percent of moisture. As I said that the combination is basically we try to do it in a progressive manner. That means, we have got a three, four different types of or maybe different dimensions of your equipment. So, your material has to be carried from one equipment to another equipment. In between, we have got a material handling system and material will be transported much easier if the flowability is not affected. So, when we have moisture material, when we have moisture content in the material, the natural flowability of this material is lost and it has been found that if we have around 5 to 50 percent moisture, the natural flowability is lost. If we have more moisture than 50 percent, then it started behaving like a pulp or a slurry, because then the flow of water will try to transport my material also. So, under these conditions the material tends to cake together in the form of balls and they try to form like a your agglomerates and in general when we go for fine particle breakage that is your grinding that it should be done either in dry condition that is below 5 percent moisture or maybe in wet condition more than 5 percent uh, 50 percent moisture otherwise we have problems. There is another thing called crossing strength. What is the crossing strength? That the power required for crossing is almost directly proportional to the crossing strength of the material. So, that means how much the power is required, we will discuss also this aspect very soon. It is a function of what is the crossing strength of that material. It is not a single particle we are talking, we are talking about a your large volume of material that is a bulk commodity. Then the friability issue, friability means if the material has got a natural tendency to be broken during handling stages also. The friability of the material is its tendency to fracture during normal handling. So, in general a crystalline material will break along well defined planes and the power required for crossing will increase as the particle size is reduced. So, friability is also very important issue, we have to take care of that. Stickiness we have already discussed that is sticky material we tend to clog the grinding equipment or say breakage equipment and it should therefore, be ground in a plant that can be cleaned easily. That means, how do I clean the surface of my equipment through which the basically the, the force is being applied to break my particles. Otherwise, the applied force may not be transmitted to my particles and the particle breakage will not be satisfactory. Soapiness, in general this is the measure of the coefficient of friction of the surface of the material. If the coefficient of friction is low, the crossing may be more difficult. Then explosive, such materials must be ground wet or in the presence of an inert atmosphere, whether the material is explosive in nature. So, in that condition may be depending upon the nature of the that your root causes for that explosiveness of that material we have to find out and then depending on the need we may have to process that material either in inert atmosphere or maybe in wet condition. Then materials yielding dust that are harmful to the health. That is, when you are breaking the material to a, say suppose even though your aim is to have a size range in between 40 to 10 millimeter, but as I said at the beginning that this art that it is not the science which has 
helped us to perfect this. We are trying to optimize the processes, but still we will be there is no way that we can ensure that no fine particles, no particles finer than 10 millimeter will be produced. But in the process, if we generate also very ultra fine particles like less than 10 micrometer sizes, which are maybe airborne and that may be injurious to that may be <coughs> having adverse effect to our health. So, that also we have to take precaution otherwise we are not doing right thing to our society and it is not permissible as per environmental law also. So, such material must be ground under conditions where the dust is not allowed to escape. So, you have to take sufficient measures to capture the dust before it becomes airborne. Now, coming to this point that is how do we design the size reduction processes then? The process of size reduction is normally designed to take place in single stage open circuit or maybe single stage closed circuit or multiple stage open or closed circuit. In some cases a combination of these methods are adopted. So, what is this open and closed circuits? So, why we are calling it circuit when we are talking about only one equipment? Actually what do we do? Suppose I have got a material I am feeding it into a machine which is supposed to give me particles that is your discharge particle I want to have a size in between 50 to 10 millimeter. But how do I ensure that material whatever I am getting that is within that specified limit that is within 50 to 10 millimeter sizes. So, we have to use screens at the discharge end. We need two screens of 50 millimeter and 10 millimeter sizes. So, only in between the particles that is what is reporting that what is finer than 50 millimeter and coarser than 10 millimeter that is my desired product. So, very often you may find that you are getting all the particles which are finer than 50 millimeter. So, I do not have to send any material to the to that equipment again for further breakage. So, then I will send the below 10 millimeter particles, I will take out the minus 50 and 10 millimeter particle for my as a product and below 10 millimeter particle probably I will send it to some other downstream processes or maybe I will dump it somewhere. So, that is called the open circuit crossing like this is an example of that. That is, say, suppose, say, we will discuss about industrial screening at a later stage. That suppose this is a crusher whose job is to break the particles, and why do you need a screen before that? Because the crusher can accept only a top size, say, suppose 1 meter. Now, a mined sample when it is coming, suppose this is a mined material ROM run of mines, we call it. If the my friends in mining, they cannot ensure if they cannot guarantee me that there will be no particle which is coarser than 1 meter, then what I have to do? I have to put a screen here which will be called as oversize, that is, the particles which are coarser than 1 meter, they will be called as oversize, and that I will break it by some other means but only the material what will be fed to this crusher that is finer than this 1 meter. Because otherwise what will happen? If the opening is 1 meter here and if I have a particle which is 1.2 meter, so that will just simply sit on this and it will choke my crusher. Now, this crusher you see that this charge we are not trying to analyze 
that what product we have got because we are very sure that whatever discharge sizes I wanted, I have got all that. Suppose I want the mine material to be crossed to below 10 millimeter. I know that this cross at discharge can give you the largest piece of particle which is 40 millimeter. And this speed can accept easily below 1 meter sizes. So, if I set back this 40 millimeter size here, so unnecessary they will be just traveling through this and pass this. So, what I will do? All the particles which is coming back uh, coming through this, I will send it to a next crusher and next crusher product will be sent to a another crusher and maybe here I will have a screen to check or maybe if I am very sure we will say that these are all below 10 millimeters. So, that is my product. So, when it is done like this in stages that is progressively we are breaking, but nowhere we are checking that whether I am getting the particle size what I wanted. So, that is called the open circuit crushing. But many a times we are not very sure and this is normally we done when the material we think the properties are well known and they are to some extent homogeneous material. This is a closed circuit crossing. What I do here that is we are not very sure what is the product is coming through this discharge. So, we may have some oversized material. Now, I wanted to have a size in between 40 to 10 millimeter. So, I have got two screens here. So, whatever particle coarser than 40 millimeter, I may send it here for further breakage because I want all the material to be finer than 40 millimeter. So, I will do it again and again unless they are crossed to that limit. So, this is called the recircle product or recirculating load. So, when that is done, it is called a closed circuit crossing. These days whoever has done some computer programming, what we do? We write a flow chart and many times we go for iteration method. That is we try to test that is we numerically we want to solve it numerically and we put some limit and the convergence criteria. So, the screen is basically a convergence criteria type of uh, say analogy you can draw that okay if the if it satisfies your condition then you print your output or otherwise you reiterate it. So, that is called the closed circuit crushing. In a single stage single pass open circuit size reduction operation the product consists of a range of particle sizes which seldom achieves the desired degree of liberation. That means, I know that my liberation size I want below 40 micrometer, but the crossers what I have selected my job is to break it below 10 millimeter. So, I want all the particles to be crossed to below for 10 millimeter. So, why do I need a your screen? if I am very sure that each crusher is doing its job and finally, we will be getting 10 millimeter below 10 millimeter sizes and then we need ultimate breakage into another equipment where I will try to break it down to 40 micrometers. So, that is my liberation size, but many a times my customer wants a sized product that my payment will be reduced if I am generating more of finer sizes than they are recommend than their specified sizes. So, there I want to control the sizes the discrete sizes quite closely. So, that I minimize the generation of fines that is fines definition means which is finer than my optimum size of my client specified size. In that case probably we have to go for closed circuit crossing. So, how many stages we want it depends on 
what type of equipment you are using, what are the material characteristics and how accurately you want the data and how accurately you want this data to be generated. So, a second or even third stages of size reduction are often necessary to progressively reduce the remaining particle size to remain to liberate mineral particles to an acceptable degree. That means, although I want 40 micrometer size, but it should be just below 40 micrometer. If I do it on one stage, I may end up generating more particles which are less than 2.5 micrometers. That is, we call it PM 2.5 micrometer particles, which may be harmful for our health and it is unnecessary wastage of energy. So, in closed circuit, the product from the stage of size reduction is separated into relatively fine and coarse fractions. The coarser fraction is then collected and recrossed in the same unit as seen in the figure. I have already discussed it. And while doing so, what we are doing that your, your the load on the equipment for size reduction is increased. That means, say suppose my crusher capacity is 100 tons per hour, but my recycled material is 30 tons per hour. So, my crusher can only cross a fresh material at the rate of 70 tons per hour. But if my requirement is to have a very close size control, I may have no other option than doing that. So, this is the challenge to a mineral processor that how do I decide? The two most commonly used devices for size reduction are called the crushers and the grinding mills. Crushing means relatively coarser sizes when we try to break the particles at a relatively coarser sizes and grinding mills as a relatively very finer sizes. The crushers are normally fed with rocks up to about 1 meter in size while the grinders are usually fed with rocks crossed down to a maximum size of 50 millimeter. And the other difference is that the energy consumption in grinding mills are much more higher than the crushers. And so, to improve the grinding efficiency, we try to use a combination of different techniques that we will discuss in due course. Larger rocks produced at the mines are initially separated by grizzlies, that is a screen, a special type of screen. We discuss it, we will discuss it at depth when we discuss about industrial screens, broken by hammers and then fed to the crushers. Thank you very much. <laughs>